Hello, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. In this video, I've put together a uh, demonstration of how you could possibly make a, a zip in SolidWorks that I had at hand to look at. Uh, the reason I put this together was I had a spare day today, and in my previous video where I showed how to make stitching using uh, ruled surfaces to control things, uh, someone commented that they found that useful for making a zip, so I thought, hey, that's a good idea, why not have a have a go at making a zip myself. So this is the the result of that little exercise. So I'm gonna roll back through the model like normal um, and just go over things. So this is using a uh, pattern along curve again and then using a, if you watch the stitching video, using a, a ruled surface to control the twist of the, uh, the patterned instances. So I'm going to roll back to the beginning of the tree. Uh, there's quite a bit in this one. So I will just skip through things pretty quickly. I've created a model uh, textile. Uh, it's not trying to be anything like a sleeve or a bag or anything. It's just something to demonstrate on. And they uh, split at this point, as you can see. So that's where the zipper sort of will... Uh, deviate from each side then I've knitted those surfaces together and to create some relief because the zip doesn't actually come together nice and smooth like this it sort of quite abruptly once it leaves the zipper um, the slider it will abruptly sort of uh, spread out a bit so I've had to create a couple of sweeps here which are like setback distances then I've made a 3D sketch which is on these edges and that's basically the distance I'm going to have I'm going to have this edge come down and then go like that uh, you know like if you imagine the the, the sliders here the edges is up is going to come in and then tuck in through those if I bring up these sweeps these sweeps are the distance the zip's sort of going to be um, pulling open by so those are four millimeters and with those sweeps, I've trimmed them back with planes created through this 3D sketch for the distance from, from our merging point here. Then I've created uh, intersection curves between those sweeps and these faces. And then on the top plane, I've converted entities for those intersection curves and added splines. I'll just hide these. Added splines to blend in smoothly, as you can see there. So that's our our distance this is where the slide is going to be so you can see what I mean by it sort of abruptly everything comes together within the, the body of the slider okay now move on to the zip construction so I'll hide this side first so I've created a ruled surface using these edges now in my stitching video we only used a ruled surface that had one edge um, in this case there's three edges as you can see the ruled surfaces are broken into three uh, there's no way to merge uh, tangent faces in the ruled surface command and when we're using picking a face in the in the uh, pattern along curve you need uh, only one face only let you pick one face to control the twisting of the instances so to get around that in this case pretty straightforward you create 3d sketch and you convert the entities one two three and then you fit a spline through those entities so we end up with a single spline. So I've done that with the top and bottom. And then all you need to do is make a boundary surface using those two 3D sketches. And because they've got fitted splines in them, um, that's a single face there. So that will control the twisting of the pattern on that side. And then I've replicated that on the other side here, which actually has more sort of pronounced twisting in it. Okay, now we'll get on to the actual like, the little spiral setup. So I've created an axis normal to the point at the end of the surface here. So this is right back at the beginning of the zip. And then created a plane normal to that axis and on that vertex. And I've got my spiral control. So if you look at a, the side of the sort of spiral zipper, um, the elements on the outside sort of lying against each other. So instead of guessing an angle for the for the sketch, I thought I'd set this up and then I've got a 
fire equations controlling my the pitch between between each of the elements in the zip. So that way I don't need to actually uh, plug in an explicit angle here, it will figure it out for me. Um, and so when I pattern the elements along here, as long as I've got the same distance, or half that, um, I'll be okay. And then I've created a plane normal to this line, center line here, and drawn half of the path, the outside spiral path, and then I've created the sweep. I'm really going to skip through this fast. If you re if you want to have a look at the uh, file in detail, uh, it will be in the description. Just where there's a lot of information here. So, and then on the other side, I've created the other half of the spiral path, uh, which is on a plane and it's rotated. It's not on the same plane as the other side. Um, in reality, I think it's actually on a slight angle. It's not sort of uh, perpendicular to the path of the zip. And again. For this path I've used a style spline and then made the corners a bit squarer and there's a bit of a bulge on this end of the um, on the inside of the zip where the zip where each side overlaps with each other so I'm basically going to chop this area out and um, piece in a, an area to bulge so I've drawn a sketch to uh, for the area I want to split then made an extrude and then used a split bodies tool so I'll go back up in here in solids I still have that middle piece there because I want to intersect these faces to, to create some control curves which you can see there so that's that plane there plane intersecting with that face okay next up I'm going to create a plane midway around this curve and add the shape I want for the bulge, which is an ellipse. 1.5 millimeters wide. This is all just for visual, so I'm not too worried about getting exact dimensions. And then I've made a solid boundary, so you can see what's going on there. Uh, three curves in one direction and two curves in the other. And then I have mirrored this over to create the other side. And then because I need to stagger the other side, so it uh, alternates left, right, left, right, I've created a, a reference to move. And then use that reference to make a concentric mate and a, and a body move copy to move that uh, the left hand side uh, loop forwards half a pitch. Okay. Now when you're in patterning, um, using the curve pattern down here, it's a bit of a pain because you've got to pick features and so there's like one, you've got to pick that sweep and then that sweep and then the boundary, um, the boundary there for the bulge. So what I found to be better is, is I've just created an offset of all the surfaces uh, and then thickened that and then, and then you can just pattern the thicken as the feature. So you don't have to muck around with, um, you know, if you if you added other things in, you've got to go in and then reselect those in the pattern. So I find it much easier. So if you added something else in, you just go in and edit the surface offset. Pick all the faces again. So it has to be watertight, obviously. Otherwise you won't be able to um, go into the thicken and go create solid from enclosed volume. So when I go down here, and create my pattern along the zip. I'm actually patterning the thickens, not the um, not the sweeps, not the mirror directly. Right. So I will hide one of these and just uh, go into this this pattern and just show you how I've made it. So unlike my stitching uh, example where I made a very thin, like a point one um, solid pipe along here, and all the elements were were uh, merged into that. These these ones here overlap. Um, so they actually merge into a merge into each other along the pattern. So I haven't had to create that that sort of tall body to make everything merge into one body. So if we go into this curve pattern, so what's controlling it is I've picked the edge of that boundary surface that we made and we got rid of the, the breaks in the ruled surface. And then I've picked that face and you can see it's picked the face all the way along so that's controlling the 
the twist or the rotation of the instances as they go along. And then the feature and pictures and faces, I've just picked the thicken on this end. And we're using geometry pattern, which is much quicker, so we need to pick a body for it to um, feature scope for, for merging onto. So we'll pick the, the, the actual seed feature, the seed, sorry, the seed instance here, which is the thicken. Everything, everything will merge together. And that's the same for the other side. And that's the same for the other side. So you can see things are intersecting on each side, but the other, this is just for visuals if you had to put together a rendering. Okay, next on, we're going to thicken the textiles. So um, I've created some offsets. I've uh, created an offset, which is an offset copy. Oh no, not in this case, sorry. This is a thickness, so we're going to um, we're going to create like a, a a ribbon band that goes along. You see, that's if you see a zip like this has a has a fabric uh, or a weaving along here that holds everything together. That's what I'm creating now. I'm just going to race through it. Um, it's basically just me trimming this and then making a thicken, and I haven't merged that together. And then I've done the same on the other side. And they're using the boundary surface uh, that we recreated to replace the ruled surface. So they track along the same um, path as the zip. And I've added a few fillets there. Um, next up, next up, I've I've created like a setback. You know, like you've got the the uh, the woven edge of the zip, so a distance off the zip using sweeps. And then use those to split the main surfaces into bands. So I'm going to thicken these individually now. So that's thickening the inside ones for the fabric ribbon. And outside, that's our main fabric. And now there's no overlap here, so I'm just going to use move faces. And also move face in the middle here to... To give us some clearance. So insert, face, move. Very useful tool if you haven't used it before. And then I just added some edges, some radiuses. Yeah, so as you can see, um, everything pulls apart over quite a short distance. I think it was 13 millimeters. And so then I've just added the zipper, which is it's just some solids. I won't go into detail on that. Yeah, so there you have it. So building a, a zip in SolidWorks using a pattern along curve and using ruled surfaces and um, to make things, you know, like your pattern elements follow the twist. You can see there. So there's a bit of setup work. I think if if I was in a position where I'd be using having to add zips quite a bit, I'd probably have the spiral or the details like uh, of the different uh, zip types set up in a in a separate file and then insert it into my actual um, project file by insert part, insert part, um, and that way. You don't have all this extra detail and extra setup, so you could have various, um, you could probably have different co configurations or whatever within that insert part. Um, it just might lightweight things quite a bit. Yeah, so I hope you find that useful. That's making a zip in SolidWorks. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.